It is the earliest loss by a number one seed at the Australian Open since 1979. I mean, oh, it's been a it's been a minute wow. and a half, Martina. Right. How did Linda Noskova get this done? Uh, well, she hit her grand strokes really well deep, and she took advantage of the shorter balls. I, I think uh, Iga's forehand let her down a little bit. She was taking too many balls early on the rise and leaving the ball short, and Noskova said, thank you very much, I will go for it. And she made most of those shots. Also, I'm not thrilled with Iga's new serve. It looks awkward, and I just don't see that she's getting any more out of it, and it just looks really um, uncomfortable and she needs to get more free points that's where she can improve the most i think is is with her serve but overall you know again Inga, Inga did not play a bad match it's noskova just really outplayed her on the big points and that's all it took really interesting point about the serve because the way it was explained to me was that this was as much about building in some cushion and helping her nerves than about anything sort of adding voltage or adding adding tactics with with that serve adjustment in the off season i, I mean i'm a little mystified oh, by you know you don't buy i mean i'm and maybe you guys jump in. I'm mystified by Iga as well. I mean, this is a terrific player, probably the best player post-Serena on the women's tour. She's won four majors, but three of them have come on clay. And she's won one of the last five she's entered, and she just lost to a player who's you know ba barely in the top 50. What's going on and how concerned should we be? I think it, it really goes to show, when she won the U.S. Open, she was so emotional. Right? Do you remember she wasn't comfortable playing in New York and she thought that was her greatest triumph? I don't know if it's something about playing in a hard court major or what, but she has not played well in Australia. That I think that's in her head now. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to talk herself out of it through this whole Australian swing of, oh, no, I'm playing well, I feel good. She sh really, Danielle Collins had that match. Yeah. Right? And, and Iga able to get through that. But I was, I was so curious when she was talking about Noskova's serve. Comparing her to Sabalenka and Rabakina, we think really highly of this Czech youngster. A big server wasn't necessarily on our, our radar. She was average, Her first service average was 103. It just doesn't seem like it was that big number, like 110 or 115 that you associate. So something about that serve really threw off Iga. Normally she's a great returner, but she either couldn't read it, Martina, or she was just so nervous she didn't react. Yeah, I think Noskova, she was mixing up the location really well, and she's got kind of a flat ball, so it doesn't bounce that high, and maybe, you know, just a different trajectory, but she served well on the big points. Maybe that's what Iga remembers when she had, like, break point or 30-all, and Noskova comes up with an ace, so her aces were very timely. But again, I go back to Iga's serve. I just don't like it. It will not repeat itself under pressure, because... She just kind of goes and stops, you know, like it's, it's just not fluid at all. And when you're not fluid, when you stop, when you get nervous, you stop at different places and then you just don't get that rhythm. So I think she can think her, with that serve, go back closer to what she was like and maybe change it up a little bit, but it has to be fluid. It's not, it's really awkward looking. Good news for her. The next major is uh, her favorite yeah. one on red clay at Roland Garros. First ever main draw in Melbourne for Noskova. Mm -hmm. Biggest win of her life. She's into the fourth round.